All tradition is boring and Paul Lamb has just left the stage before this interview. Yeah. Cheers, Jungus. Jägermeister. Cheers, Jägermeister. Thanks, Rob. Mmm. Ava, 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 Somebody told me it tastes like chicken, but I don't believe it. Wasn't Everything it. tastes like chicken. <laughs> hey, Paul. Yes. Jägermeister down the throat. Yes. Hi, you went on stage. It was a little hectic, uh, as I maybe... Under, is it maybe an understatement because it's own own bloody own fault but no. you did a bloody good job and that means that the three of you were a real close trio yeah. it's not the first time you were jammed no, no uh, it was it was great it was a great opportunity for us and i didn't i no we we, we had a couple of uh, as it, may i use the word quagmire uh <laughs> quagmires but it was great it was great we got everything sorted out sounded amazing up here you guys were all amazing and we had ourselves a time yeah, it was great. Yeah. First of our audience, um, let's introduce you. Paul Andrew Ulysses Lamp, your father had played a trick on you because name that same and then the first few letters in the surnames are again and you put a hyphen in it. I cannot initials. say you're, you're yeah. like Prince, but you're close. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, my initials spell Paul. Yeah, yeah. So it just makes it easy. Everybody's like P dash A dash U dash L. What's with the dashes? I'm like, well, it's Paul Andrew Ulysses Lamb, but nobody's ever going to remember that mouthful. So uh, just short and sweet. Hey, you're now in Holland, and um, yeah, a couple of weeks before you had him back to the UK, but it's not the first country you've been in Europe. You told me you were, uh, come from Lithuania. Uh, actually, we were in Latvia, Lithuania, then back to Latvia, and then to your uh, to your beautiful country of Holland. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. Um, first of all, introduce the colleagues of your band. All right. This is um, Joey Spina. We call him Joey Bass, right here. <laughs> Hello. And that's uh, the pint-sized powerhouse, Miss Layla Hall from Detroit City. Hello. Well, we saw in uh, on stage that you were. Uh, Hating the, the drumsticks. Yes, I do uh, hit the drumsticks. I eat the drumsticks. I throw the drumsticks, etc., etc. She usually plays with her hair. Uh, yeah. I do play with my hair every now and again. It was. We, we got some complaints from the guy who lent you the drummer. He said, oh, "I go to clean it." <laughs> at, least, at least I didn't kick it over this time. The guy in Lithuania was like, "Why'd you kick over my drum set?" Well, at least you didn't put a Keith Moon on us. Thanks. Nah, but put a bomb in the kick drum and set it up. Yeah. Hey, but you're, um, you just released the CD, Gunshot Lullaby. Yes. And you, you played a couple of songs of it. And what, uh, what was stuck as me of the CD is it's, it's produced, of course. There's singing in it. Um, there are some keyboards in it. Obviously, you couldn't do that tonight. But um, you put a lot of thought in the CD. Yeah, we, Let, uh, let's let's put it that way. Yeah, it was uh, you know a studio project and um, a lot of great musicians. I heard a lot of different Detroit musicians and actually musicians from all over the world played on it. Uh, friends of mine, and I, I made a little bit of a production out of it. And uh, it is our uh, debut tour with the with the album here in Holland. It's been out now for about a year, and we actually have a brand new record all ready to come out uh, in the spring. And it's just the three of us actually. So we went from the the production down to sort of a three piece. With a couple tricks. You said you had a lot of uh, friends you know over the world. Isn't that your story? That you traveled first in America and you meet a bunch of people. So you exactly. have to meet a lot of people who influence you on the, yeah, for, the, for the kind of blues you want to play. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, I've, it, I've had the blessing. Uh, music has taken me all over the world from, you know, Central America to the Russian border and everywhere in between. And uh, I've met some amazing musicians along the way, and every single one of them has given me some sort of idea or concept to uh, to dig a little deeper. I'll put it that way. And uh, my, I'd like to think that our music that we play is a byproduct of our our travel and the wonderful people we meet and the wonderful people we deal with. Good, yeah. absolutely. Putting up the record of uh, when you went to uh, record that record, you guys come in. Did he say, well, I got a little uh, riff here, I got a little idea somewhere, help me with the bass and help me with the drum. Is that true or does it, is it Paul the little Adolf? Definitely the former than the latter. Definitely the former than the latter. He's like...
we have a little uh, we have a little hovel we call we go to a, it's a beautiful island in the middle of Lake Michigan it's called Bee Island it's an island it's in the middle of nowhere it's a very remote place and we'll it's a, little, a cabin in the woods on the lake we go up there and we saddle up and I say all right guys I got some ideas you know I got some songs and I'll give it to them and we'll sit up there and we'll just jam for days days on end no I think and this no you think that no I think this and yep yep and it goes on forever it goes on forever and it all comes together. And then right about the time we think it's right, we invite a bunch of uh, locals down. And if it turns into a dance party, we know we're doing it right. Well, if you're on a lake, there are probably any fish yeah. nearby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're too loud for the fish. Yeah. That fish in Lake Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Detroit, uh, better known as the Motor City. But, Indeed. Um, is there still room for the, for the, the blues rock you want to play? Oh. The blistering blues rock, as you call it. Uh, you know, uh, D Detroit has, is probably the, and obviously I'm a little biased, but I think it's the great, greatest music scene in the world. Um, the musicians that come out of Detroit are phenomenal and endless. Uh, you know, we could go on naming all the musicians and people that have come out of Detroit. We don't need to do that. Um, but we're blessed because we play in a scene where you're constantly mixing and mingling with some of the greatest musicians in the world. And of course, they influence us. And you find your little families, uh, and you you jam with them, and we tour and we do things together. Uh, it's a cutthroat city, but it's it's a very very beautiful music scene, very thriving. You self-taught on music? I am. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm about as self-taught as they get. Yeah. Isn't that a problem if you were gonna invite it as a studio musician or a session musician, that they uh, throw you a paper with the, with the lyrics of the notes on it and? Yeah. Here, Paul, I, do your best. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, being self-taught and, and getting asked to do a lot of studio work, I think people, uh, when they come to me, they're not looking for me to play the part they want. They're looking for me to play the part that I would play and put it in their music. And that's the difference with me. You know, I'm not a super heavy studio cat, but I get asked to do a lot of uh, uh, studio work because people are like, well, Paul's got this crazy old unorthodox style of unknowledge. Put them in the Paul vibe. Put it in there and see what happens. So that's why I get, uh, you know, if you, get a, if you call it a recipe, do you want a dash of Paul lamb in it? There you go. That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> a little sprinkle of lamb on you. <laughs> and it's extra spicy. And sometimes overcooked, but oh. sometimes well overcooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, next couple of days in Holland. Yeah. Yep. We're off to so uh, far. Skidam. Tomorrow at the podium. Uh, Friday night actually is some wonderful gentleman here offered us a gig around the corner because we had the night off. And we were going to head to Amsterdam, and then um, Saturday night at the Malo Malo in uh, Amsterdam, and then off to the UK for a month. Yeah, sorry on the, on the internet that you like the uh, the Malo Malo. Yeah, thank you for. Scapenzale. Malo Malo. Apologize. The guys, oh, he's a good guitar. You a fine gentleman and a good guitar player. Indeed, indeed. But next, and then back to the, the, the States? Yeah, we're there for, we're in the UK for a month and then back to the States. We land, we have two days, and we do a three-week tour of uh, the southern part of the United States. And uh, then it takes us into the holiday season where we're going to get a uh, couple, couple of days off somewhere <laughs> in there, maybe. I don't know. We'll end up jamming somewhere. Well, well uh, we've got a couple of uh, questions left on this, but promoting your CD, okay. Internet is almost... You can't do anything without internet. Cannot do how anything. do you how do you get along with it online? Oh, you know our album obviously is we are we're in the iTunes thing and the CD babies and wherever you can get your hands on it. It's very interesting how much the industry has changed towards the internet, uh, and we market it there. Uh, we're still grassroots enough to where we like to sell CDs from the stage, and there's something earthy about that that I still love. But yeah, the internet is a, a huge influence. You know, we do all the Facebook, MySpace, all that stuff, like we all do. You know, uh, but it's all there. Yeah, you can get our you can get our albums uh, all over the internet e very easily. When you started to play, um, that you had uh, a, a plan laid out for yourself. Here's Paul Lam. I'm now 19 years old. I love this music, and I'm 949. I wanna be. No, no, it's. Every big stadium. I'm a rock star. <laughs> that was his plan. <laughs> I'm going to retire. 
No, no, you know, it's funny. It's like tonight alone changed the way I look at my entire career again, like it does every night. We showed up in a situation with a bunch of wonderful people that helped us set up. We had a few things we needed to work out, and, and, and the way it came together was beautiful because I've been doing this long enough to like, be able to juxtapose myself against the position, as did you, and we made it work. You know, I don't know. And, but again, I learned something new tonight, and it's a constant learning process. So to, to say, is this how it's going to go? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> now, how you think it's going to go is exactly how it's not going to go. Well, to be honest, the same with us for Blues Moves Radio. We thought we ordered all, sorted out, we gave our papers, and then suddenly Big Moves made a mistake, and we no, sorted it out. No, no, no. There was no mistakes. And you did it a fine job. Really did. Thank you so much for this interview.